So I accidentally skipped this video last week, so I'll be doing it this week. Um, using volume formulas. So basically, we're gonna take what we learned in the first module and use it. I think what happened was I already saw it was volume, and I assumed we had already done it. But this one, we're just applying those formulas that we've used and how we can use them in different scenarios. So the goal of this lesson is going to be um, apply formulas for cylinders, pyramids, cones, spears. So just a quick review on the formulas. I know Bentham's going to have us do it right now. But the volume for a cylinder, and let me plug in my tablet right now. and wait for it to calibrate. So the formula for a cylinder, we've kind of discussed how the for formula is basically the area times the height. This tells us how much space is taken up. So for a cylinder, it's pretty simple. What we're doing is we're taking the area of the base, in this case, it's a circle, which is pi r, squared and we're just multiplying it by the height so it's pi r squared times height uh, for a pyramid those are essentially give me a second and by the way one thing i always recommend too is to have a separate tab open and if you forget the formula of a pyramid these are provided by the sats and things like that so there's no shame in looking up pyramid formula volume, and Google actually provides you with the formula right here. It's gonna take a little while to load, apparently. Is it not providing the formula? Huh, usually it provides the formula right here. I wonder if Google got shy. Uh, formula, or volume, formula for pyramid. There's no reason for it to not provide the formula because I'll actually show you this tool is actually pretty useful in that it actually explains what the formula is, but um, I guess it's not explaining it. So let's kind of derive it. So a pyramid, I like to think of it this way. A pyramid is essentially just a third of a rectangle. So you guys might have seen that like a triangle is essentially half of a rectangle. So if we look at a rectangle, it's a it's going to be half. Well, if we look at a pyramid, a pyramid looks like it's kind of part of let me get rid of this terrible drawing. It essentially looks like it's part of a prism or a rectangular prism. So what happens here is we end up getting the base, the area of the base, area base, times the height. But for a pyramid, we're looking at it a little bit smaller than a prism. So it's one third. So it's length times width times height divided by three. And there's actually like, you can see that people are actually asking that right now. I like to think of it as, well, a triangle is half of a rectangle that's in two dimensions. So a pyramid, which is kind of like a 3D triangle is a third of a rectangular prism because we're in 3D now. Cones. Cones essentially are the pyramids for cylinders. Think about it. It has a rectangular base or rectangular circular base and it's pointed. So it's a triangle of a cylinder. So we're going to take the exact same thing, this formula pi r squared, pi r squared, times height from a cylinder, but now we're gonna do pi r squared times height divided by three. 
sometimes you'll see it as one third times pi r squared times height. But either way, these two are the same formula. A spear, um, I can't really get too involved on why a spear is this formula. Unfortunately, you just have to remember it. It's four thirds um, pi r squared or pi r cubed. Um, the cube just think it's in 3D shapes. And like I said, I can't really get into why it's four thirds. I'm actually really surprised that Google doesn't have the formulas here anymore. They used to just put the formulas out here, but now I guess uh, they got shy or something. Now all you do is just put it in here. Hmm. Uh, worst case, what you can always do is type in the formula you're looking for and uh, go to images. I think that's probably the best way to get formulas since Google is no longer providing them. Um, but we have this right here. All right, so that's the formula for volume. So let's just quick tune up on volume. Um, so when we're looking at volume, there's a bunch of different shapes everywhere. So it takes time to figure it out. Uh, you can read their little story about and uh, how much volume needs to be cooled down inside of the house. So you need to figure out how much volume a house is taking place. So cylinders, like I said, that's just the base of a cylinder, which is a circle. You can see that here, these things are cylinders, a circle times the height. So it's pi r squared times height. So let's take a look at cylinders. All right, so they want us to kind of get a feel for the relationship of cylinders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click this little formula right here. I always think it's funny because it's like, oh, we're gonna establish the relationship. By the way, we put the formula here. Here's pi r squared times height. So the first one they do is 10, 20, and we get that. And I'm not the biggest fan of how they do this here. I don't know why they give you a tool here um, because this doesn't give it to you in pies. So basically what you're gonna do here is just make up any number. I recommend easy numbers. So if I said something like it's two with a height of five, what is it? Well, pi r squared times uh, height. Um, again, this tool, I do not recommend unless, let's see here. Nope, they don't let you do it in radians because they want it in radians. Um, I guess if you don't mind having it here, I think it's really um, whoever made this wasn't paying attention um, because they put their answer in pi, which is known as radians. Um, so it looks like there's like uh, just round because of the tool's rounding. You might see discrepancies in the tool due to rounding decimals. That's fine. So just copy these numbers. So it's already at 12 and 14. So what we're gonna do here is do 12 and 14. And we're gonna do this. So manipulate the height, record the radius length and stuff. Okay, so, and that's, 6333.44, 6333 points, where's my decimal point? 44, 44, 45, 45, rounding. And then you can manipulate this to whatever you want. I'm gonna make this a little smaller. Let's make it down to eight. Uh, let's get this down to 10. And be very careful with how you're doing this. You might end up moving this. So just make sure you didn't like move the radius or anything. So we're going to do 8 for our radius, 10 for our height. And according to the formula, we're getting this um, 2010.62. 20, 20, Let's do this one more time. Let's make it 10 and 10. Why not? 10 and 10. So I'm going to do 10 and 10. And I'm going to get 31, 41, 
3141.59. All right, and then you can just submit that. That one's nice and easy. They can give you an example. Um, suppose you want to design a cylinder with the same volume as a given cylinder, but you want a different radius and height. In general terms, how would you change the R um, to produce R and H to produce the same volume of both cylinders? So this is a very complex question. Um, essentially, what you're doing is just to kind of let's write this out. You're making the volumes equal, so you're going to have two different heights and two different radiuses. So what you can do here is we're going to make uh, one of the formulas equal to the other formula, but we're going to do a little bit of trickery. Um, what I recommend if you guys aren't comfortable with using what's known as subscripts, um, you can just use the different letters. So you can, like, instead of R, you can put, like, um, Q equals second. Uh, radius or something like that. Radius. I can't spell this morning. Radius. Or something like that. I'm going to use subscripts. So what I'm going to do here is both of them require a pi. We need an R. I'm going to use a subscript. One. That tells me it's the first radius. And then height subscript one over three. Oh, by the way, it's subscript and superscript two. So this is telling me radius one squared. And then over here, I'm going to do um, pi. Where's my pi? Pi radii two um, superscript. Oops. Make sure to use your right button when you're superscripting. This is because you don't want to be in the superscript doing a subscript. That was my bad. So do that. I hit the right arrow on my keyboard. Now I can do um, a superscript. And I do right again just to switch it. And then it's going to be height subscript 2. And it's going to be over three. So let's say that we want to um, make the volumes the same. How are the volumes going to be different? So what I'm going to do here is four uh, radius two. So I'm essentially going to solve for radius 2. Now, there's a few things I notice when I'm looking at this formula. I don't need the pi because the pi is on both sides. I don't need the 3 because the 3 is on both sides. Um, the h1 and h2, keep in mind, these are different variables. That's why I said you can use a different letter if you want. Like you can call this r2 instead of calling it r, r sub 2 sub meaning subscript, R sub 2, you can call it Q. Instead of call, this being a H, you can call it a K. You can call it, so this can be R, this can be H, this can be um, a Q, this can be K. Just have different letters if you're not comfortable with these. So if I'm doing this for the second radius, if I multiply by 3, that gets rid of the 3s on both sides. If I divide by pi, that gets rid of pi on both sides. So in actuality, when I'm looking at this formula, if I'm solving for the radius 2, like how does radius 2 change if the volume remains the same? Oops. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> for radius 2. Or you know what? I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to leave it as radius 2. That makes sense. Radius 2. So let me... Copy this, control C, control V. Oh my gosh, I did it right in the middle of that. For radius two, control V. I don't need this divided by three. Oh my gosh. Well, this is not my day. <laughs> all right, so all I basically need, in other words, is just this 
I don't know why the control C is not is working half the time. Control C. Okay. So all I'm gonna need, I don't even need this pi. I don't know why I took that one. And I'm gonna set this equal to the other side. Because I'm solving for R2, that's why I already have the R2 over there. So do, do, do. And I'm going to assume that, so I'm going to say 4 radius 2, assuming height is the same. So if height's the same, I also don't need to worry about this h, right? So I'm going to see how this, uh, or I can't assume height is the same. I'm going to have to change height. They're, <laughs> I was wondering why I wasn't writing it down. So I'm going to do this. And what's going to happen here is, what is the question asking me? Da, 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 different height in general, what can we do here? So, um, I'm trying to think of how to word this in a way. I was trying to do it with the formulas, but I realized that's really hard to explain. Hmm. Well, I don't want to get too technical on here, but essentially what we're doing here is if we get rid of everything, everything that we don't need, we're going to say any changes done to the, so let me just explain it in words. Any changes done to the height um, must be um, done to the radius Oh, any, you know what, this is a better way of saying, any multiplication done to the height must be divided to the radius to the radius, but at a square root the rate. And then I can also say any I'm going to copy the same thing. But now I'm going to be talking about any changes done to the radius. And this one honestly might make a little more sense. Must be divided by to the height. And it's important that I say two instead of by. Because if I say divided by the height, it kind of doesn't make any sense. When I'm saying to the height, I'm saying like, let's say I do, I change the radius by three. I do it three times more. Well, if I do that, what ends up happening is I'm going to get nine R, nine of the original. And I want everything to be balanced. So what happens is I'm going to do height, um, I'm going to do 9 divided 
from. Oh, you know what? That's actually better. Must be divided from, not to, from. Must be divided from the radius. I apologize. Um, my grammar is not the best. That's why I teach math. <laughs> so it must be divided from the radius. Must be divided from the radius. But squared of the rate, which is why we did the nine. So let's say I do a change to the height. Let's say I do the height, um, let's say three times. So I say three times the height. Uh, or let's make it four times the height. Let's say I do four times the height. Well, I want everything to kind of stay the same. So I'm going to have to end up square rooting that four. So I have to only change the radius by two. I'm square rooting that. I'm going to divide this by two so everything stays the same. And uh, the way I wanted to show that was through uh, the math. And I realized what made this complicated was I was changing them when I should have changed it a different way. Um, so I'll probably show that in the next activity. I'm sorry, I've taken a lot of time there. So using the online tools, you combination of height, record the different dimensions. Uh, you see below, using find two combinations. Of okay, so we're trying to find two that have the same height. Well, let's do something like this. Let's take one we already had. Let's say we had uh, R is equal to 10 and H is equal to 10. That's the one we're starting off. Well, let's say I wanted to double the height or let's double the radius. So if I do double the radius, I'm gonna do 20. I multiplied it by two or yeah, let's multiply it by two. So we're multiplying the radius by two. Well, according to what I just said earlier, that means I have to divide the radius by four. And it should be the same. So mm, I don't like these numbers for that. Let's do 20 and 20. So that'll make this 40. That'll make this five. So if I did this correct, I want the radius to be 20, 20, but then, oh, I did this backwards. Any changes done to the height must be divided by the radius, but a square of the rate. Okay, so let me just change the height then. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, radius uh, 20, height is uh, 20. So I'm going to multiply this. Changing the height is the easiest one, I think. So what I'm going to do is, let's kind of do it like this. This will make it a little easier. I'm going to um, multiply this by 2. So I get 20. So if I'm multiplying this by 2, let's multiply it by 4. If I'm multiplying this by 4, I have to divide this by 4 to keep it even. However, I have to square root it. So I end up having to divide it by two. So if I'm multiplying one by four, I have to divide the other one by two. So this should be 10. So this is why I kind of struggled with it at first. I'm like, wait, what should I do here? But we'll do it this way. Let's have a radius of 20. And of course it doesn't go that high, great. So 
Let's go back to the original 1010. I'm really sorry, guys. I know I don't normally would edit this out or something, but I don't have editing software. So we're going to do this. Hopefully it goes up to 40 now. I'm really worried that it's not going to go up to 40 for this other one. Okay. For some reason, they are okay with going really high. However, it does kind of options. Can I zoom out? Oh, you know what? We're going to use this. So this will just make everything a lot easier. So first, we're going to start off with 1010. This is a tool that calculates it just by entering it. You can also use Google if you prefer it. So we're going to do 1010. So we're going to say R is equal to 10. H is equal to 10. Volume equals 3141, 3141.58. And let's see if this theory works out. So if I'm multiplying this by 4, I need to divide this by 2. I'm going to do square root the rate. So I'm going to do 40 for the height now. And I'm going to do um, 5 for this. I'm going to clear off only the volume. That way, when this calculates, it knows what it's calculating. And I still get the same answer. So is the same as R equals 5, H equals 40. And that's pretty much all you have to do. You just had to figure that out. So I'm sorry it took me a while to like explain it the way I was supposed to do it. Now, let me show you how it's supposed to be done. So if I have pi r squared h over 3 equals pi. Oh, actually, I've been doing the over 3, and I just realized we're doing cylinders. So if I do pi r squared h, um, pi r squared 2h, in order to make these even, what's going to happen here is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to cancel out my h. And then I have to put a k here because I don't know how much I'm changing my um, r by. So I cancel out the H's, cancel out the Pi's, and then I end up getting R squared equals 2K squared R, because I have to square the K. I don't know how much the K is yet. I'm just squaring it. So now what I do here is I divide both sides by R, and it's like R equals 2 times k squared. So if I double the height, this is what's going to end up happening here. So I end up getting this r over 2 square rooted. So notice how this was changed. Like that's the same rate. We doubled the height. We're going to divide it by 2, but it's going to be that much the height. All right, so let's take a look at something else. So when you look at the two cylinders, what do you notice? You can pretty much write here um, what we changed from the height was divided by the radius at square root the rate. So that's what's happening there. Uh, which is the greater effect? Um, changing the radius has a greater effect because 
it is squared in the formula. So, again, I'm apologizing for Edmentum because these are great facts. However, without having someone who actually understands the formula and the effects of the formula, it is very, very difficult to come to these conclusions on your own. You saw I struggled to find the easiest way to explain it. I understand how to do it. I know very way, ways to explain it. However, it becomes very difficult um, if you don't have the math background. So that's why I ended up just saying the facts because honestly, they need to state the facts and give you a series of things so you can notice it on your own rather than like play around with this and hopefully you come up to the same conclusion. Uh, using your algebra skills, how can you rearrange this to express this in height? Okay. Um, when you're given the V and V, remember perform operations on both sides. Perfect. So this actually, it's a little weird how they worded it, but it's manageable. So what we're going to do here is we're going to solve for height. So we're going to find height. So we do this. Boop. And this is actually pretty easy, relatively speaking. We want to keep the height there, but we we're multiplying it by this pi r squared. So what we end up doing is we end up saying we're taking this volume, and we need to divide this from both sides. So I'm just literally going to do that. I'm just going to divide both sides by pi r squared. Very simple, nice, and easy here. Boom, that's how you figure out height. If you know what the volume is, you can divide that by pi and the radius squared. That's all you have to do for this one. Nice, simple. Um, I honestly think they should have done more of these and led to the conclusion of it. But I don't make this program. So I would, most of you, I would say three. Um, it was hard to explain the changes like i couldn't explain it to you with the limited knowledge i'm trying to solve these um with the knowledge of what you guys have so it is very challenging to do so that's why i'm saying three it was hard to explain the changes of radius that would happen to the height. And I can't even like say that in words. I can't even describe it. Um, mainly because they didn't give you enough to mess with here. And they didn't even tell you like, hey, like try to make the volumes the same constantly. If they said like, hey, make these the same, then we could have something here. But they're not saying that. Record the radiuses and the exact volume. They're saying record the exact volume, but they didn't say keep all the volumes the same. If they said keep the volumes the same, we would have something here. They only did that once. So it is challenging, and I'm sorry that took up most of the time for this video. Um, I will do the other ones later, but let's at least go over the summary of what we had to learn from this video. So, oh. Well, this is just a solving one. I'll start this off nice and easy to warm us up for the next video. Um, like I said, I'm sorry, this one was a little more challenging, um, but hopefully I'll be able to get this out in two videos instead of three.